yourself, how can I avoid this whole like Texas state of emergency th stuff that's happened and what has been going on with all these storms and stuff that are coming through? Well, it's only going to get worse, folks, because the solar minimum is just kicking into gear. So that's a 10 year cycle and we're in the beginning. So you got more of this coming down the pike. So you might want to pay attention to this video. Thank you for joining me. I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners, and let's get going on your emergency preparedness and why you need to be prepared. Now, let's just take a step back in time, shall we? We're going to take a step back in time because about a year ago, we started off with this whole thing with the, quote, pandemic came to town, and what happened? We all saw the grocery stores and everything else empty out and because the couldn't get it from the warehouses back to the stores and keep everything stuck because people are buying it faster than they could stock it. Well, then we were just in the same situation just over the past week or so, giving these storms that have been coming down, the polar vortex that has come down and brought the bitter cold weather and freezing and ice and snow and everything else to most of the country except for a few places. Now, one way you can avoid this is you want to make sure that you are prepared. All right, this should have been a very good learning curve, folks. Now, I live by a pretty good standard here. You get me once, shame on me. Get me twice, shame on you. You're not going to get me a third time. So you might want to make sure that you start preparing. Now, a lot of people out there, they're also afraid of being labeled. All right. There are different types of terminologies that are used when you start talking prepping. All right. There is one called a prepper and then there's the other one that is called a hoarder. Two different things. If you don't know the differences, Google it. It'll tell you. You want to make sure that you are a prepper. You want to make sure that your emergency preparedness is key to survival, folks. Okay. You want to make sure that you do have a few things that will ensure that you're not in the same boat again for a third time because things aren't going to get any better, folks. There's going to be more stuff that's rolling down the pike. The scientists and everything else that are studying, like the solar minimum, the change in the climate, and everything else that has taken place between the pandemic, the climate, and the solar minimum, well, we've got ourselves a perfect storm, and we don't know when it's going to end now, do we? We don't have a crystal ball, so we can't predict the future, but we can be prepared for it. So let's get going on this, all right? You want to make sure that you have food that you can cook relatively fast. You want to make sure that you have food that's not going to require a lot of fuel to take to make. Now, you're not going to be sitting here cooking a nine course meal. You want to make sure that you can cook something that is healthy, nutritious, and that your family likes to eat. You also have to make sure that you do have a nice stockpile of all the ingredients and things that you're going to need to do this. You know what your family eats. You know what your family likes. Make sure that you buy that, you stockpile it. If you pay attention, use coupons, and you're buy one, get ones, you can really go to town and save yourself money, and you will eventually build your stockpile up, okay? Next, you want to make sure that you have water. This has been the biggest thing with this whole thing with this whole Texas um, state of emergency type situation is, is that they ran out of water. They had to turn off the water, basically, because water was coming out of everywhere. The ceilings, uh, the ground, pipes were bursting. You saw the cars that were like frozen and solid blocks of ice and everything else. And so they had to come through and turn off everybody's water. Well, now you have no water. Now to melt snow, if you took a spaghetti pot and tried to melt snow and everything else, well, you're going to be doing it a while because that whole spaghetti pot, once it melts down, is probably going to be about an inch of water. You don't get a lot of water out of snow. Remember that, folks. In case you didn't know that, there's not a lot of water in snow. So it takes a lot to do it. It takes a lot of fuel to make sure that you can do that. Now, unless you have a huge fuel truck that's parked right in your backyard, well, then you could probably sit there and melt all the snow you wanted to. But if you're like most of the general public, you're not going to have that. So you need to make sure that you are utilizing the amount of time that you are cooking to secure and preserve your fuel. Some way to cook. 
you want to make sure that you pick up yourself up a Coleman stove. Okay, you can buy an adapter, run it off a 20 pound or a 50 pound tank of propane, and that will last you for a very long time if you really pay attention to how you're cooking and how long. All right, I have three 20 pound tanks. I probably could run my Coleman stove off that probably for about three months. So <clears throat> it's all on how you prepare and plan your meals and what you're going to be cooking. All right, heat source. Now you can buy different types of heat sources that you could put into your home. Now, yes, these things are not probably gonna heat your whole house. Let's just face the facts. You're gonna to have to close off the biggest room in your house because if there's say four of you, you need, we have a little bit of space and you wanna put that in there. And if you have to, you hang sheets up, you block off all the entrances and everything else and you heat that area. Now, when you're using a heat source, whether it be a propane type heater, a kerosene type heater, those types of heaters and everything else, you wanna make sure that it is away from anything. It's gotta be away from furniture, blankets, curtains, anything. It's got to be setting by itself, nothing around it, period. All right. And you stay away from it. Treat it as an open flame. Okay, folks, if you don't, well, chances are you're probably going to burn down your house. So you don't want to go that route because if the fire started and if it's a natural disaster type situation, the chances of the emergency people getting to your house to save it before it burns to the ground are slim to none. So now you're homeless on top of being hungry, need something to drink, and cold. Don't go that route. Okay? Now, fuel. All right? When you're dealing with fuel and everything else, like I was saying before, when you have like your Coleman stove, a gas one stove that runs off of the butane, um, there's different ways that you can, you can buy different products. This way here, you, you always want to back up to your backup. All right? basically to whatever it is that you're going to use for your main cooking you want to have something that's for a backup in case something happens that breaks all right they just don't make things like they used to folks and at that point in time it's not like you can walk into a store or get online and say hey you know my warranty i need to send this in i need a new one and you don't have that time time is of the essence you need to have something that you can go okay well that's not working now throw it over there in the corner and grab the next one and so you can continue on being prepared the key to this is emergency preparedness having a plan having some way to make sure that you can cook and you have food to cook you have water to drink and cook with all right now we've all seen all the pictures and everything and the videos and all that kind of stuff on the TV and everything else has taken place, all the crashes and all everything else. When that type of weather hits, if you don't live in an area where you're used to driving in it or anything else, I would suggest you just stay off the roads. It's probably the safest thing for you. We saw all the pileups and everything. We saw how the supply trucks that, you know, haul all our goods, the tractor trailers, they were stuck on the interstates. They were actually using fuel trucks to go down through there to keep those trucks fueled up and running until they could get the roads clear to get the trucks off the highway. And there was just lines of tractor trailers. It's just what it is, folks. You want to make sure that you are prepared. All right. Emergency preparedness will basically get you out of the Texas state of emergency. When the power goes out, when the, the water's turned off, all this stuff happens. If you're prepared, you have nothing to worry about. If you have clothes that you can wear, you can put clothes on to get warm. But if you don't have anything, it's kind of hard to put stuff on. You know, if you just have like t-shirts and stuff, well, that's probably not going to do you any good. You can put four or five t-shirts on. You want to make sure that you have some type of maybe winter clothes. A good idea that you could do with that is, especially if you live in an area where maybe you just don't get that cold, much cold weather, you know, very often. Go down to your local Goodwill. Go down there and see if you can pick yourself up a hat, coat, and glove. Well, you may not look like Rockefeller, but you know what? You'll be warm. And this way here, you could take it home, buy yourself a plastic tote, put everything in the tote, 
as far as the winter stuff and put that out in the garage or spare room, spare closet, wherever it may be, but you have it in case of an emergency. This way here, you can break that stuff out, put it on, and you can be nice, toasty, and warm. You have some way to cook, you have food to eat, you have water to drink, and you just have to ride out the storm and preserve what you have and control how much you are eating, and you will make it to the other end. So I am Survival Preparedness for Beginners. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please do me a favor. Give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, click that little bell, share it with your friends and family, especially if they live in any of these affected areas. So hopefully that they will be prepared for what may be coming because there's going to be more coming. Trust me, this isn't the last conversation. So until next time, I will catch all you on the flip side.